Number 11. Arrange each of the following sets of compounds in order of increasing boiling point temperature. And then we have CH4, which is methane, C2H6, which is ethane, and C2H, C3H8, which is propane. All right. So whenever we're trying to rank molecules, especially covalent molecules, ones that are just all nonmetals, if we want to rank them by increasing boiling point, secretly what they're asking for is to basically identify your intermolecular forces. Inter, oh boy, intermolecular forces. Because the more intermolecular forces that you can pick up as far as a molecule, the higher the boiling point. So let's see, maybe one of these will have, you know, multiple intermolecular forces, but the only way to, uh, you know, do this is to draw out the Lewis structure. Now it's just one extra step, but I promise you, if you see them, it's easier to identify the intermolecular forces. As you get good with Lewis structures, you could probably see what's going on with this in your mind, but I will put it on the screen for you just in case uh, you want to just see it visually. So we have CH4, C2H6, and then we have C3H8. So pause the video if you need to and try to write out these uh, three organic molecules. They are organic because the basis is carbon and hydrogen. And organic is another, uh, another beast in itself. And hopefully one day we will be able to uh, teach you that class as well on the channel. Definitely that is in the works. Um, but yeah, so check the channel back from time to time just to see what other classes we have out for you guys. But anyway, let's draw the Lewis structure. So CH4, I have a carbon in the middle surrounded by four hydrogens and no lone pairs. So that's CH4, beautiful on that. C2H6, I have two carbons bound together with then three hydrogens on each side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, no lone pairs here. So everything is good. And then C3H8, I now have three carbons strung together with now two hydrogens in the middle, and then the three hydrogens on both sides, bringing you to a total of eight hydrogens, and we are all good here. All right, so now let's just make this look nice and pretty. We'll put this over here, we'll put this one over here, and we'll put the CH4, whoa, what is going on? There we go. I will slide this over this way, And now let's take it away. Now we're going to go by the most generalized force to the most specific dispersion forces. No exceptions here. All compounds or all molecules, no matter what's going on, will always have this force. Now dispersion forces, they're also known as London forces or Van der Waals. It doesn't really matter what name you use them as, but I'll use dispersion here. So dispersion. Forces for CH4, dispersion forces for uh, C2H6, and dispersion forces for propane C3H8, because everyone, doesn't matter what it is, will always have dispersion forces. Okay, the next intermolecular force is dipole-dipole attraction. And now we're getting more specific, only polar covalent molecules have this force. So that's the question. Are these polar or are these nonpolar? Well, think of the acronym SNAP, S-N-A-P. The N stands for nonpolar. That's the one type of uh, covalent molecule. And the P stands for polar, the other type. The S and the N go together, and the A and the P go together. Now, S stands for symmetrical. So if your molecule is nice and symmetrical, you don't have any lone pairs of electrons in the center atom, everything looks good, you're nonpolar. 
A stands for asymmetrical. Asymmetrical. I think I can... Did I, did I miss an M here? I think there's two M's. A, oh, that's why. A, symmet. We'll just call it that way. So if you want to be polar, just know that any polar molecule has to be asymmetrical. Well, let's see. If I look at CH4, I have a central atom carbon with four hydrogens around it. There's no lone pairs. That looks pretty symmetrical to me. CH4 would be classified as nonpolar. It's got symmetry to it. And therefore, since it's nonpolar, it does not have dipole dipole attractions. Moving on to C2H6, if I cut this molecule right down the middle, I have a carbon and three hydrogens on the left. I have a carbon and three hydrogens on the right. No lone pairs. That's pretty symmetrical to me. So this would be nonpolar. Let's do the same for C3H8. Now, it's perfectly right and okay to draw your symmetry line down the point of axis that covers the one atom, the one central atom. And if I do that, I have a CH3 on the left. I have a CH3 on the right. That looks symmetrical to me. This would be nonpolar. So since none of these molecules are polar, um... They don't have dipole-dipole attractions. And the last intermolecular force is the hydrogen bond, the most specific of them all, be because you have to have a hydrogen, but it's got to be bound to a nitrogen, an oxygen, or a fluorine, the most electronegative elements on the periodic table. But all of the hydrogens here are bound to carbons. I have no nitrogens, I have no oxygens, and I have no fluorines. So they don't have hydrogen bonding either. Generally, if you do see that you're collecting intermolecular forces, your boiling point will increase. But how am I going to rank boiling point if just all three have dispersion forces? Well, now this comes down to, if they all have dispersion forces and there's nothing different between the intermolecular forces, just know that the higher the boiling point will solely come from the higher molecular mass. Now, there is an exception here which is more specific into this idea about having a long chain versus a kinked chain, especially for organic molecules. But in this case, we're just going to go with the general idea that the higher the boiling point, the higher the BP, the higher the molecular mass. So all you have to do is just add up the masses of these compounds, going straight to the periodic table and just finding out what the molecular mass is. So... This is kind of like review. So let's see, molecular mass, or the molar mass, you know, what, whatever one you want to uh, write it as. Technically, if we say that it's a molecular mass, we have to put down AMU, um, but we'll see. So generally, a carbon is 12, right? Roughly 12 grams per mole on the periodic table. You got four hydrogens, so that would be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So CH4 roughly weighs about 16 AMU, if we were just estimating. Here now, I have two carbons. Two uh, times 12 is 24, and then I have 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30, because each hydrogen weighs around one. So this is about 30 AMU. And now I have three carbons, so 12 times 3, which I believe is 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44. So let's put that down. And now we can clearly see 16 to 30 to 44, which one has the higher the boiling point. The higher the boiling point, the higher the molecular mass. And we have to do this in terms of uh, increasing boiling point. So I'm going to put the highest one over here. We'll put increasing BP and the lowest one over here. And
And the lowest one would be the lowest mass, which is CH4, which has a lower boiling point than the next one, the next molecular mass up, which is 30, which is C2H6, which has the lower boiling point than the 44 AMU one, which is C3H8. And now I can just group this. I'll put this underneath. There we go. And there is your answer. Let's box this off and call it a video. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> anyway, who's that? I mean, everybody knows who that is, right? Let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, we're done. Thank you so much for viewing the, this video. I really hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And um, yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.